we wanted to do now is jump over to an actual demo and show this uh, running inside of um, PharmaStack. So I'll talk about PharmaStack in a little bit, but at a high level, it's a managed service that includes, among other things, uh, Ignition uh, and a database in the cloud with uh, this centralized identity management and uh, version control via Git and backups all basically handled for you. So I'm going to jump on over to uh, my browser here. And uh, Nathan, I think we're going to start off by launching a new incognito window. And uh, we're going to log into uh, a PharmaStack application that we spun up in about 20 minutes for this demo. Um, this is a little bit different in that uh, in order to showcase this without us having to kind of move screens back and forth, um, uh, Nathan and I are going to be sharing keyboard and mouse control uh, and logging into multiple applications to show you a uh, basically a um, perform and approve uh, workflow for doing electronic signatures. So with that, this, Nathan, I'll let you pretty, uh, take it away. Sure. Yeah, this is this is a pretty slick approach to do this with identity providers that are completely separate. This would work well if, if I was at my desk on my browser. I mean, I could do this and Joe could do it separately. But for the purposes of the demo, you could imagine this um, on the production floor and we could, anyway, you'll, you'll see what, what we do there. It's pretty, pretty neat, I think. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and log on. So you'll notice that Ignition referred us over to this Microsoft identity provider, which is now getting referred over to Duo. Uh, this is basically the workflow that I was showing earlier. And so Nathan has a process for going through and logging into this with a, a second factor, which I'll, I'll let you talk about. Right, so I have a username and password that I use, and then I'm also protected here with the Duo mobile app. I can do it on my phone or on my watch here or on my phone. So it's gonna have me type the verification code on my phone and verify. So that's that strong multi-factor authentication. Um, we're gonna go ahead and, and not trust this. And it gives you the option to go passwordless with a FIDO2 or hardware tokens. So we're not gonna go ahead and do any of that. Now you can see that we're logged into an application. So this just happens to be any old Ignition application that's uh, running inside a PharmaStack. Um, what we're gonna showcase is something on this distribution screen where we're actually going to take a valve and move it from uh, auto to manual as part of a maintenance process. And to do that, we've configured electronic signatures on that, which means that as an operator, which is gonna be me uh, because of my group assignment, I'm gonna go ahead and try to make a change uh, to the status of that, um, that valve. And then uh, it's gonna prompt me for a signature. And then Nathan, as my supervisor, is gonna go ahead and uh, have to approve that. So we'll show what that process looks like. I'm gonna click on the valve here go to manual and uh, oh I guess this is still left over from the uh, the last time we didn't confirm that one let me change to uh, a different valve here so um, you can see this is SVP 102 so it's asking me for a signature so I'm going to go ahead and log in here and this is going to be my account and uh, there's a there's settings you can configure for the browser basically if you didn't want to have uh, auto storage of passwords in here. So this is something that we would typically advise customers to do. Of course, we type this a lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and have this saved. And uh, even in this case, I'm still gonna have my own two-factor that I've basically enforced at the organization level, which will apply to all applications that are using this. But now if you can, I don't know if you can see this on my watch, it's basically prompting me for my second factor. It also would work on my phone. Now I've gone ahead and uh, performed a signature, which you can see here. It says electronically signed by, this has my user ID, which is provided by my identity provider, uh, yeah. and then a timestamp in UTC. That's, so, and, that, and that's interesting. So, so I'm the approver here, or the verified by step here. So I can see what the value was that it was changed from manual to auto. So what that state is, um, who it was performed by and when, and then, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign that now. And basically the same same thing. I'm going to enter my credentials. And as Nathan mentioned, this works if this is kind of simulating where he's sitting, you were standing next to me in the plant looking over my shoulder, but you can imagine this can also work from multiple different uh, terminals. So Duo remembered that I logged in so it doesn't need a password, but we're still doing this multi-factor push. So I'm still going to have to type in the app is telling me where it's coming from and what the app is. So I have to type in that number and verify on my browser and it's doing the face ID check on my iPhone. 
Um, so we got strong authentication um, for each of us using different methods, and, and you can see the, the signatures there, electronic signatures. So, and I'll just go ahead and say, you know, we are, uh, uh, in this case, we're already in manual, so we're leaving, you know, maintenance mode. I can option, um, you know, leave a, leave a comment. This is, of course, an application level feature. We do provide a template for this uh, as part of PharmaStack, which we'll touch on later, but um, this is just application level features. And you can see now the status of this valve change from manual back to auto with that signature having been recorded. So um, I've never seen other software, again, SCADA software specifically, that enables you to perform electronic signatures like this using um, external identity providers where Ignition itself doesn't have to have the, the username. And I'll say a couple of years ago, I had a similar demo to this where we were using a um, local Active Directory uh, installation over LDAP. And then of course, Ignition um, communicates with um, Active Directory and it'll pass those credentials. And so when you're creating a form to collect that, Basically, you have to have a password field, and Ignition has to have those, which um, again can be a potential, uh, you know, security risk. So in this case, because we're redirecting to the identity providers themselves, uh, Ignition sees none of that. We're still able to capture a signature, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so that was the first thing that we we mentioned uh, demonstrating. The second one was to actually show you um, the audit log. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to actually launch the Ignition Designer which will hopefully be familiar to folks um, who, uh, who are using Ignition. And it's launching on my other screen, so bear with me as I drag these forward a little bit. Um, but what's gonna happen is because we've established this single identity provider for logging into not only the Ignition application, but also to um, the designer where I can make my changes, you'll see here that it's telling me to log in instead of asking me for a username and password right here. And then when I go to log in, it's going to um, in my other browser window here, um, basically ask me to authenticate uh, once again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this once again, using my same credentials. Um, I am now getting my multi-factor to approve on my phone as well as my watch. And then this is going to confirm that I'm signed in. And when I go back to the Ignition Designer now, you can see here that uh, here I'm able to go ahead and select my project. So for demonstrating this, um, I'm gonna load this change control demo project uh, for the, the next two parts of the demo. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to actually show you the um, that's pre-configured um, audit trail uh, database connection in action. So I'm loading up my designer, bring it over on this screen. And uh, Ignition comes with something called the database query browser, which is kind of a, a quick and dirty way to let you do queries against a database. And what's nice about it is that it uses the same uh, Ignition user account that um, uh, you that the, the Ignition gateway itself is communicating with. So we can test basically our credentials pretty quickly here. So if I go to the database query browser, uh, and I again drag this over to the screen, um, you'll see I have, uh, we have an extra one for testing, but basically I have three database connections that are configured out of the box. This is part of what you get with PharmaStack when you first launch your Ignition instance. Um, it's got an application level database, which you have full read write access to um, for your own applications. If you're gonna be using, let's say, Cepasoft modules to do MES or anything else that requires a database connection, you would use this application level database that's pre-configured and managed. Um, we have the audit log, which I'll come back to in a second. We have the historian, which is actually a pre-configured time series database. So you write to it the same as you would um, any relational database, but under the hood, it's actually doing some uh, really smart things around um, partitioning data so that you can do inserts of time series data and queries over very large time periods um, without subject to the typical slowdowns that you would see from just doing this inside of um, you know, it's Postgres or MySQL or, or Microsoft SQL Server that's not optimized for those use cases. And finally, uh, for the demo, we have this audit log uh, database, which is a special connection that is limited to only allowing you to do, like I said, inserts and selects. So I can showcase that real quick. Um, this is the audit events database. I can go ahead and do a select, and this is pulling um, the actual records that are inside of my, my audit trail. But if I try to do something uh, clever, either you know automatically or through a um, uh, you know through a script or something like that, you'll see that I get this error message, uh, which first says that I'm in read-only mode and I can't do it. So if I change to read-write mode and I try this again, you'll see now I have this permission denied for table audit events. 
So that's basically confirming that the user account that I have uh, that I'm logged into does not uh, have authorization to do deletes. And we can do the same thing with updates and everything else, but that's a nice kind of quick and dirty way to, to showcase that. So um, the last step that I wanted to showcase here is to actually make a change um, to an application. So if I go ahead, this is uh, basically this uh, change control uh, demo is uh, uh, different from the full client application we were showing, but it basically has a single screen here, a single view. And if I go ahead and open this view, you'll see um, it just has a, a gauge here with a title. And uh, another thing that comes out of the box with PharmaStack, and which we encourage you to set up as well, is there's version control baked into this. So that any time I make a change and I hit save inside the Ignition Designer as I'm developing, it's actually going to collect that change and push it up into a version control repository that I'll show you uh, that has a really nice UI and some workflows in place to um, allow you to uh, run an approval process for those changes. So let's say I'm gonna do something sim uh, simple to basically change the title of this. Uh, let's say this is actually temperature. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And now um, I can hit the button to make it more explicit, but basically these changes should be getting pushed to a central Git repository and we'll show you what that looks like in, uh, in just a little bit. And this is, um... This is pretty cool. There, there really is a lot going on under the hood that um, that the system has automated external to Ignition with the version control system to, to make this kind of thing work, uh, you know, work well. It's a pretty neat feature. Yeah, so an Ignition has, uh, Inductive has really good guidelines for doing this again yourself in that Ignition 8 deployment best practices guide that we'll, uh, we'll link to. Um, so this is a dedicated instance. Uh, we're using an open source tool called Gati, which is great, highly recommended. Um, and I can go ahead and click sign in and you'll see I have this option to sign in with OpenID, which if you remember the diagram, this is the exact same protocol that um, Ignition itself is using to authenticate. Um, I happen to be already logged into uh, Azure AD inside of this browser session. You'll notice it's pink and not uh, the incognito window. So um, this is basically pulling in my user account here. And you'll see that 23 seconds ago, an Ignition user pushed to our main branch um, at this project, PharmaStack slash Ignition. And inside of here, um, this actually has a commit with the changes that were made, which in our case was pretty simple. It was basically changing the, the screen title. But this is gonna be really, really cool. So what we're gonna do is me representing a developer. So I was inside the designer. I went ahead and made these changes. Um, we're gonna generate what's called create what's called a pull request. And you can see I've done a, a couple of these in testing, but this is basically a request for me to take the changes that I made in this main branch or this development branch, and I want to have those promoted over to production. So when I start to do this, you can see this is basically identifying that commit. So think of this as the time that I hit, you know, save. And um, this is a file that Ignition uses for basically tracking when, you know, a resource was changed. This is really nice because it actually gives you for screens, it'll give you a preview of what has changed. And so again, if you squint a little bit, you can see that the title of this gauge changed. And then critically, uh, because these resources are stored as text, as JSON files, I can see the actual value itself that was changed. So this is what's basically going to be collected um, into my pull request. So I can click new pull request. Uh, I can give this optionally, you know, a name. Uh, and then I can leave a comment to say, you know, um, uh, gauge title changed, and then I can upload screenshots if I wanted, or I'm just going to go ahead and click create pull request. And so you'll notice I really I have this now basically paper digital paper trail, if you will, of uh, anything that happened um, for this particular pull request, as well as commits in here. And Nathan and I and others could come in here and have a discussion, and we can go back and forth on things. And you'll notice here that. Um, I'm not authorized to merge this pull request. So I have no rights to be able to, you know, take these changes and push these into production. Somebody who has proper uh, rights to do that, I will have to do that, which is what we're going to demonstrate uh, next. So um, I'm going to do this on uh, my screen. So you'll notice I'm back to my incognito window here. We're gonna do the sign in process again, but instead of me doing it this time, uh, Nathan, I guess you're signed in from the other incognito session, but you can go ahead and log in yep. and uh, I'll let you carry it away. Um, yeah, so this this was the same the same one that I have a session with from the 
the multi-factor login with the application um, that we did earlier. Um, so I see the, the pull request here by Joe. So we're gonna go ahead and um, review what the changes are. And then I'm gonna go ahead and allow that, that merge to happen here. So you can put in comments or again, you can kind of go back and forth. You can request for additional changes to be made. This is all pretty pretty standard stuff for folks working in software. But again, you show this to folks maybe on the quality side and this was, I had, I had you know, jaws dropping, which I thought was pretty cool. So. Um, oh, I'm having trouble typing, but. <laughs> yeah, it looks, looks great. So we'll create the merge commit. And now you can see the status of this is merged. And again, we have this digital paper trail. And if we were to go back to our, our code view here, you can see this is our main branch, which had the code, you know, basically from the um, four minutes ago. And now we have the same four minutes ago when I switch over to the production branch. And what's really cool, and you may not want to do this uh, in pharma it's, uh, necessarily, but uh, we have another demo that I'll link to in the, in the references, which actually will allow you to make something happen um, when that merge happens. And so as an example, you can have, let's say, your dev system and your prod system, or maybe more realistically, like a test system up at the same time. And as soon as you push that change and you merge that, that um, the pull request, you can actually promote those changes to the other environment um, with zero downtime. And again, that's one of those things where I've seen, you know, JAWS uh, prefer preferably hit the floor because uh, you don't have to schedule massive downtime to make, to make changes that are like that. Of course, yeah. it's important that you're making sure that whatever you're doing aligns with your own quality processes. So we're not showcasing that here. It's not as applicable to pharma, but it's nice to be able to have that as an option. Yeah, and, and to be clear, in case it got lost in some of this technology, um, we did not make design time changes in our production environment. We, we made our changes through the design environment in our, in our development environment or, or whatnot, and then used this workflow to approve it, keep track of what, what changes, and then that pushed the actual result of the change up into the production environment. That's right. And, you know, it's up to you if you want to, you know, how you want to connect this representation in code of your projects to an actual running ignition implementation. Um, but yeah, well, uh, good, good point to clarify, especially, uh, especially around pharma. Um, and that was, that was it for the demo. 